The solution is instant, simple, and sustainable. I tested and tried the proposed interventions in 2011 in two Eastern Slovak locations. I focused on defunct forwarding paths, ruts carved by heavy machinery, and compacted soil, and I decided to decompact them transversely with excavators along the entire length and width from top to bottom. This way, the pits dug out by the excavator would retain the rainwater. When the pits were freshly dug, the rainwater would take even longer to seep in. It means that the water created channels, new capillaries, and infiltrated the ground to reach the plant roots, springs, and groundwater. When I returned in spring 2013 to observe the decompacted soil, I found water in 15% of the pits at most. In the other pits, the soil took in the water immediately, much like an intact forest soil. If there were man-made slopes less than 2 meters high over the compacted soil areas, we ripped them to a depth of approximately 1 meter, so the water oozing from the capillaries could gradually infiltrate the decompacted soil in the slope and the dugout pits. The Slovak Academy of Sciences put the capability of decompacted soil to absorb water effectively to the test. The experiment was conducted on an eroded road formerly used for transporting timber. The scientists simulated rainfall with the intensity of 100 millimeters for three hours. The measurements showed that whilst the compacted earth hardly absorbed any water, the decompacted path retained 100%. How to resolve issues relating to man-made slopes. Man-made slopes over forest firefighting paths and haul roads that serve to truck the timber out of the forest can be treated in the following way. We decompact the soil one meter in width and approximately two to four meters in depth along the contour line approximately five to 20 meters over the man-made slope. The water discharged from the disrupted capillaries will seep in the loosened soil and gently reach capillaries in deeper soil layers. How to resolve issues relating to lowland drainage canals. I propose small concrete barriers with an opening to be installed in drainage canals that allow the regulation of water levels in canals and by extension groundwater levels. I put this technology in practice in 2010. After two years, these measures prove their validity and functionality. These shots were taken in the dry summer season of 2012. The water level in the canal and the well 100 meters away match, which means the canal is integral in maintaining groundwater levels and replenishes the wells. While the canal is empty, the water level in the well 70 meters away is 24 centimeters higher. The dried up canal gradually drains the water from the well until both water levels even out. I took a number of measurements in different places. All of them proved that there was a correlation between the water level in canals, wells and groundwater. Wherever the canals were regulated well, and managed to retain water, the wells nearby were not short on water. Their water levels seemed stable. However, canals without water are detrimental to the groundwater system because they slowly drain it. Simple solutions are often most effective. Paradoxically, they are often the most difficult to gain public recognition. We tend to underrate ideas, which are right under our noses and they align with nature. Instead, we are drawn to complicated constructions and to speculations about too much rainfall or global warning, which we supposedly cannot influence. I am convinced that just as we can harm the nature on one hand, we can help it on the other. We can carry out thousands of small and financially undemanding interventions with immense final effect. Let us retain water where it falls. Let us stop unchecked water drainage and landmass desiccation.
Reasonable and simple solutions are innate to nature, and they can minimize disasters. Please give them a chance. I did, and you can too.